This case represents a patient with osteoarthritis of the shoulder having about 28 to 30 degrees of glenoid retroversion with posterior glenoid bone loss. The implant is placed, as you can see, in a corrected version with about 8 millimeters of bone for grafting. The model of the bone is represented here uh, as a plastic model with the guide pin placed in the correct location for correction of glenoid version. An adjustable instrument uh, with adjustable legs is placed over the uh, model and adjusted so that it registers the location of the guide pin relevant to the bony morphology. The collet is then tightened and the device is checked. The uh, patient bone is then marked as the same as the uh, model and the guide pin is then placed into the uh, glenoid bone. This is a simulation model for surgical training. The model that had the guide pin placed is then placed in a measurement tool which demonstrates the location of the pin as to identified by the two dots demonstrating this to be within five degrees of the desired position. As in this particular sawbone model, the guide pin is again placed much in the same way as it was shown in the simulation model. The guide pin is inserted. The anterior glenoid is then reamed such that the anterior half of the glenoid is prepared. The posterior glenoid is then step cut with a burr removing bone near the midline of the glenoid and tapering this posteriorly such that very little bone is removed. This allows for a symmetric bed for placement of the graft which is obtained from the resected humeral head. The defect in the posterior glenoid is then measured both in its superior inferior and medial lateral dimension. This is then marked on a sterile piece of paper and traced out and cut as a shape. This is then used to verify the bone graft shape is correctly sized for the defect. This template is then used on the resected humeral head, which is then traced onto that portion of the head such that it can be shaped with an oscillating saw. Oscillating saw is then used to cut the shape as a bone graft that has approximately 8 millimeters thickness in the posteriorly and 3 to 4 millimeters uh, anteriorly. The graft size that is used for the defect is slightly larger than that which is needed for the final dimensions as this graft is ultimately reamed after it's placed on the glenoid surface. The graft is then placed manually and Guide pins are placed both superiorly and inferiorly such that they avoid the center peg of the glenoid. An additional third pin is placed in the center. The guide pins are reamed with a cannulated drill, the length of the screw measured, and two cannulated 4.0 screws are placed through the superior and inferior guide pins. When they're placed from posterior to anterior and contact the anterior cortex, they result in compression of the graft within the step cut of the glenoid. This provides a very stable graft construct for support of the glenoid component. After placement of the screws, the center guide pin is removed. You can see in this demonstration excellent compression of the graft into the defect. The reamer is then used to create an even surface from anterior to posterior and the center drill hole is made for the center peg of the implant. This is followed by placement of the peripheral three holes using the instrumentation provided by the manufacturer. Derotation peg is placed in the anterior hole, then the superior hole is drilled with an additional derotation peg, and finally the posterior hole is drilled. Once this is completed, the surface has been prepared for placement of the trial component, which is inserted and impacted, showing excellent backside contact.